Welcome to the Ironwood Gym. A couple months ago, Mitchell Hooper, in response to an article from Muscle and Fitness, uh, Mitchell Hooper came out with a list of the top 10 exercises to get strong. And then he created his own list based off of that. He reviewed their, their list and then came out with his own list. And today, I'm going to have a little fun with this, and I'm going to review what Mitchell Hooper did and then give you my top 10 list. Now, first off, before we go any further, muscle and fitness is largely appealing to the masses. So they're not really uh, in tune or it, it's coming more from the perspective probably of personal trainers, of the general fitness enthusiast or the general public. Mitchell Hooper is coming at this from a, not necessarily from a strongman perspective, but he definitely has a strongman frame of reference when he's looking at these exercises. Myself, I've been a competitive powerlifter uh, for 15, 16 years. I am no longer competing, but I tried to utilize a more all-encompassing viewpoint when I came up with my list. Um, another interesting note here is that, well, first, I hold Mitchell Hooper in fairly high regard as far as his knowledge base, and he's the world's 2023 World's Strongest Man. So from an experience base, he's got that as well. One thing I was thinking about when I went through this is that I've actually been lifting for longer than Mitchell Hooper has been alive. Not trying to criticize Mitchell Hooper, not really trying to float my own boat, but maybe a little. Anyway, he's only 29 years old. I've been lifting for over 30 years, so uh, just an interesting note to point out there. So with this, I do have notes because otherwise I'm going to forget things. With the notes come means I have to wear these. So put these on and let's, I'm going to roll through the muscle and fitness list, kind of give some of the comments that Mitchell Hooper made about that list and give the feedback as far as whether we agreed with that list or not and which points we agreed with and which ones we didn't. Then I'll give Mitchell Hooper's, Mitchell Hooper's list and then finally my list. And we'll try to roll through this fairly quickly. All right, muscle and fitness. First exercise that they listed was the bench press. And these aren't necessarily any specific order. Um, it's just the list of exercises. So with the bench press, Mitchell Hooper said he liked the bench press, but did not include it in his top 10. I, however, did include it in mine. And I'll go, I'll go over a little bit, little bit more detail when, uh, when I get to my list as far as why I included these things. Dips, great exercise, exactly what Mitchell Hooper said. It is a great exercise. I agree with him, great exercise, but neither one of us would include it in our top 10 list. Uh, we would both exclude it. For me personally, dips has its limitations because not everyone can do dips, all right? It's, there's, if you have bad shoulder mobility, you may not be able to do dips in a safe manner. If you've had, if you have pre-existing injuries such as an AC separation, uh, a lot of people with AC separations cannot, even years down the line, cannot go back to dips. It is far too aggravating for that injury. So for those reasons, I left it out. The deadlift was third. Mitchell Hooper did include it in his list and kind of ironically, being a former powerlifter, I did not include it in my list. Um, the deadlift to me, you don't have to be super strong to lift fairly decent weights and you could be very strong and not be able to deadlift well. The deadlift is very highly dependent upon leverages, long legs, long arms, short arms, short legs, short torso, long torso. Those things make a big difference. Quite certainly the deadlift can make you very strong uh, but just gauging it, it's probably not, it, to me, it wouldn't make the top 10. The squat, absolutely. I have a few caveats on that that I'm going to share later, uh, but definitely the squat should be in there. 
Again, Mitchell Hooper, myself, both agreed with that one. The next one, I agree completely with Mitchell Hooper on this. They had step-ups listed. It's kind of an oddball thing. Why would you even put that in there? It definitely would not build the most amount of strength. There are far better exercises to do that. Even other single leg exercises are better than the step-ups. So I'm not sure how that one made it in. The bent over row, I think the one that they meant was the barbell bent over row. Both Myself and Mitchell Hooper both included rows in our list. Um, but in maybe a little different way than the, the muscle and fitness meant it. For just a strict barbell row, it is highly dependent upon low back strength. So if your low back is weak, chances are you're not gonna be able to row a lot and get as much out of that as you would like. But that brings another reason why you should be doing it because it will help build up that low back strength along with your lats traps and rhomboids to perform the movement. So I'll get into that in a little bit more detail later. Again, Mitchell Hooper and I both like to have rows in there. It's just not necessarily how we, we would do it a little bit differently, maybe. Pull-ups. I think pull-ups are phenomenal. I would definitely have them on my list. Mitchell Hooper disagreed. He, didn't, he felt that it was too sp specific and not, um, total body enough, but that's not how I interpret the list. And I think pull-ups are a fantastic exercise that people, even if they can't do them, they need to get to where they can and it will make a huge difference in their strength levels. Next would be military press. That is a very strict overhead press from a standing position. Um, Mitchell Hooper put it in, but he kind of generalized it and he said any sort of overhead pressing um, I did not include the strict military press, even though that's something I really like to do. Um, I'll get into what I put in its place uh, in, whenever I present my list. Shrugs, definitely not. Kind of another thing like the step ups that you can use a lot of weight, but it's so specific to only the traps. That's not how I would uh, go about getting strong. So it is something that you could do. It is a good exercise for the traps, but just not some, it's just an assistance exercise and that's it. And then the final thing on the muscle and fitness list was the close grip bench press. I could think if I'm trying to get strong and I'm gonna use a close grip bench, it wouldn't be the close grip bench. It would be a variation of it, such as um, different heights of boards. So a close grip board press or a close grip press off of the safety pins possibly even a close grip floor press, not the close grip bench itself. Um, Mitchell Hooper also did not put it on his list, so it didn't make either of our lists, and his reasoning was it was too much just a variation of the bench press, and there are other things that could go in there. So that's the muscle and fitness list. Let's go down Mitchell Hooper's list next. And again, I'm going to try to put this in a more reasonable order than how he gave, or the, the, actually the order that he gave it in, and I have it written all over the place, so just bear with me on this. Uh, number one he had was the squat, and he kind of felt that's the best overall uh, builder for strength. Again, I have that in there. I'm a little bit, I have a different way of talking about it, so we'll get to that here in just a minute. Number two, he had the deadlift. I already gave my reason for not having that in there. Number three, he had the overhead press. And like I said just a minute ago, for him, it was any sort of overhead press. It could be the military press. It could be uh, a push press. I don't know how far he intended that to go, whether it's a seated press or uh, dumbbell overhead presses, but he likes having the overhead press in that top 10 for, for sure. Number four, he had the farmer's walk. I agree with him on this. The farmer's walk is definitely a great exercise for getting strong. It's gonna work everything from the traps. It's gonna work the low back and the obliques and the abs to help stabilize as you're walking. Um, it's gonna work to a certain point single leg strength, although you're really not getting into really bending your knees a lot. You do have to stabilize on one leg as you walk. Uh, a lot of ankle strength as well. Grip strength is definitely uh, involved in there. So 
it involves a lot of total body musculature and it is something you could use to get strong for certain and it's something that carries over to a lot of other things such as deadlifting or carrying your groceries in uh, because you have to carry something and i don't look at carrying your groceries in as a necessary thing but put it on the list i don't know why it popped in my head it just did uh anyway we'll move on number five yoke carries to me no it's not going to make my list uh for him I don't remember everything exactly he said about that, but being able to stabilize everything, kind of like I said in the farmer's walk with that bar on your back as you're walking uh, was a big thing that he uh, emphasized with that. To me, I've done yoke carries. I used to do them quite a bit and I like them, but it's not something that I would do uh, from a practicality standpoint, from, uh, from a safety risk standpoint. It's probably, it just doesn't make my list. Number six, he had the leg press. The leg press can be a good exercise. I think it's more of it as a mass building exercise to build mass in your legs, especially your quads. You could definitely use it to get strong with heavy weights as well, but taking out all of the supporting elements as far as having to stand up with the weight removes it from my list. It's too isolationist. Um, it's still a good exercise, uh, just not, it just doesn't make my list. Number seven, this is what he replaced the bent over row with, was the pinlay row. Now, if you've listened to Mitchell Hooper, his version of the pinlay row is not what Glenn Pinlay intended the pinlay row to be. In fact, Glenn Pinlay used the pinlay row to make the barbell row more strict. Uh, Mitchell Hooper kind of goes the other way with it. I would not include the pinlay row. Again, I do like rows. The pinlay row would not be my top mass builder or top exercises to get strong, not, not in my top 10. Number eight, he had the sled, the arm over arm sled drag. I think we're going too strong man-ish on this. Yes, it, it can help you get stronger. It just, to me, it just doesn't make my top 10. Uh, number nine, Atlas Stones. Uh, actually, I've never done Atlas Stones. I've done some things kind of similar to it. I do think it is phenomenal at building strength. I wouldn't put it on my top 10 from a practicality standpoint and an injury risk standpoint. It just, uh, I can't put it in on my top 10. And number 10, he had the seated barbell overhead press. So I kind of hit that already. He has two overhead pressing things. To me, the seated barbell overhead press is so limiting in weight. I wouldn't put it in there. Again, I like overhead pressing. That one just doesn't make my list for the top 10. All right, so here's my top 10. And I used four. I tried to, to have a kind of a system of putting my top 10 together. So my top 10 has the four things that I criteria that I utilize. And the exercises don't have to meet all four but they have to meet at least one very strongly. And if they can meet two or three, that's great. So one, I'm looking at serious strength athletes. What are serious strength athletes going to utilize to get strong and what will help them the most? Even if they don't utilize it, what would actually help them the most? You don't have to be a competitive lifter, but if you are very serious about what you're doing and not only from a going in and slamming your head against the wall trying to get strong and go crazy not from that perspective but from a knowledge standpoint and from a very smart intelligent standpoint going about what you do um, that's a serious strength athlete that i'm talking about it had or er, being derived from the three strength sports so i looked at movements that come from the the three strength sports of the world's strongest athletes and that's powerlifting weightlifting and strongman. So exercises that those that are in those competitions or that are derived from those exercises or that those athletes utilize to develop those competitive exercises. So that's kind of a little wordy on that, but basically exercises that are derived from the three strength sports. Number three, and this was an absolute must. It had to fit the five fundamental movements. And those movements are push, pull, 
squat, hinge, and carry. Okay, I believe Mitchell Hooper uses six that he includes the overhead overhead pushing different than just pushing. I put that, I lumped that all into one, um, and I actually divided my list based on that, those five movements. Push, pull, squat, hinge, and carry. And then the fourth thing I looked at was practicality. Is it practical for someone to perform or is it not? And there's different factors that go into that. I'll explain those as we go. So here's my top 10. Number one, and I started with pushing movements. Number one is the bench press. I have my, being a competitive powerlifter, I still have my arguments against the bench press. Do I still do it? Yeah. Um, do I like it? Yes. But I think there are some things that, that people, basically people overdo it. So, but the bench press is phenomenal for building strength in the upper body, uh, triceps, pecs, shoulders, phenomenal for developing all of those. So bench press is definitely in there. The next one also in the push category is the push press. I left out the military press because it is from a weight lifted standpoint, it is much lower than the push press. The push press allows you to handle more weight, pressing, placing more stress on the delts, more stress on the triceps, and more stress on that upper back, the traps, the lower, um, lower traps to support and that stabilize that weight up overhead. The heavier the weight is, all those muscle groups have to work a lot harder, therefore it's producing a lot more strength. Squat, okay? So number three, fall, now we're moving into the squat category, and this is where I differ from the other two lists. I'm gonna divide my squat into two different types of squats. So number three would be a powerlifting style squat, okay? Powerlifting style squat, the old school west side way of a wide stance, pushing your hips back as hard as you can, um, having a forward lean with your torso, pushing your knees out over your feet as you squat back, and a very vertical shin angle. This is gonna develop strength phenomenally in the hamstrings, the glutes, the hips, and the low back, okay? So from, it's a very posterior chain oriented squatting. The reason people have given up on this and said that it doesn't work is because they do not commit to it for long enough. Most people when they switch to that style of squat are quad based squatters and they have not trained their bodies to squat with the proper muscle groups and they have to spend time to do it. If you do that, you will have great results at developing a posterior chain. And for that, it is number three on my list, um, falling in the squat category. And the number four is actually a weightlifter style squat. So letting the knees come forward, sitting down more than back, much more vertical torso angle. Um, Phenomenal at building the quads. The deeper you go, the more hamstrings you're gonna get involved in that as well. It is a phenomenal movement for developing strength, and I would have that in there. So two different squat, two different types of squats in there um, on my list instead of just saying broadly squat, um, like Mitchell Hooper's list did and the muscle fitness, muscle and fitness uh, list did as well. The next movement that I would have or exercise that I would have to get strong falls into two categories, the squat category and the hinge category. And this is a full clean, a, a clean where you're gonna rotate down and catch the bar in a deep full squat, full front squat position. You can't, this is gonna be absolutely phenomenal for developing essentially total body strength. You're not getting the tricep, the push out of it. I am limiting it to just the clean and not the clean and jerk because I think the clean and jerk is too limiting, although a fantastic exercise. It is too limiting from a practicality standpoint. Not enough people know how to do that. It's much easier to teach someone how to clean than how to clean and jerk. Once they go to the jerk, the weight gets cut way back. It would take a long time for them to really develop their weights for a full clean and jerk. But the full clean, you can get to sooner. So. Uh, I think it, it, you really can't beat it. it. It involves the quads, it involves the hamstrings. 
you have to use a ton of ab strength when you receive that weight to stabilize and to stop the weight from just crashing you to the floor. The, the abs, the low back, um, the lats are used, the traps, the glutes, all of those muscle groups are used to such a high degree, it has to be included in the top 10. The next one, also coming out of the hinge category, and this will be number six, is the RDL. And I really debated on this one whether the RDLs would be better or whether the good morning would be better. But due to the amount of weight utilized, I think that the RDL fits better because you can use a lot more weight and you're just you're gonna get more development out of the uh, the upper back, the, the rhomboids, the lats, uh, and the traps than you will from the good morning. If you want to say stiff leg deadlifts instead of RDLs, fine. They're pretty much the same thing. Don't get me started on that one. Um, anyway, moving on after RDLs, I'm going to move into the pull category. Number seven would be the pull-ups. I think pull-ups are great. It is primarily a lat exercise, but as your pull-ups go up, you'll notice other things go up as well. Okay, so they are building strength that's very functional and very useful. And if you can't do pull-ups from a strength perspective, then it's very beneficial for you to find a way to do pull-ups and start and progressing into that. Uh, pull-ups are just, other unless you're really super light and you can do a ton of pull-ups, pull-ups are a great builder. Even if you can do a ton of pull-ups, you start adding weight and you will start seeing significant mass uh, improvements and significant strength improvements as well. Uh, next on the pulling category, and this is where I really had a tough time. You know, they included the barbell bent over row with muscle and fitness. Mitchell Hooper didn't like that because it's limiting with the low back. So he included the pinlay row. I would prefer a barbell row over a pinlay row. Over time, your low back will get stronger, and then you will start getting more out of the more out of it with the lats and the traps and the rhomboids as far as that row goes. But along with that is the single arm dumbbell row. I am I like to do it different ways, but the way to get the strongest with it is to not put your knee up on the bench, just put your hand on the bench and let your body rotate a little bit with that as you, as you lower the weight and then get that high elbow pull um, as you rotate your body back. Not a ton of rotation, because you want some of the anti-rotation strength that goes along with that, um, but you do want some rotation to really stretch that lat out and, and get as much range of motion as possible. Uh, but either one of those, I, I had a hard time to, um, determining which one would be better. I think either exercise is great, either the dumbbell row or the barbell row. And then I move into the carry um, group, and this will be exercises number nine and 10. I included, just like Mitchell Hooper did, the farmer's walk. I already went over the reasons for that. I think it's a great exercise. I think anyone can do it from a practicality standpoint. And um, even if you don't have farmer's walk implements at your gym, you can grab a heavy pair of dumbbells and work with those, okay? Uh, and it's also fairly easy to make a set of farmer's walk handles. Just do a YouTube search for it. It's not that hard. Parts are fairly inexpensive. So you could have a pair of farmer's walk handles fairly cheaply. And then my last exercise, number 10, and this is probably the most controversial one on my list, is the dumbbell walking lunge and not i'm going to emphasize not the barbell walking lunge yes you can use more weight with the barbell you'll put more stress maybe on your legs but the dumbbells bring in the entire body i can't even explain the difference here i just know i've done both and the dumbbell walking lunge to me is far harder and more difficult than the barbell and I felt I got a lot more out of it. I felt I got more out of it through my entire torso as well as the hamstrings and the glutes. And the quads are working in there as well. I think that's one of the things for me when I had beginners that that was a staple in the program. We were gonna do heavy dumbbell walking lunges. 
I really like the higher reps, the 10 to 15 reps per, per leg, and without stopping in the middle. So you get to, you're gonna go 30 straight steps without stopping. I would do 15 out and 15 back, but not stopping and setting the dumbbells down. You're immediately just turning around and coming back with those dumbbells. And uh, that, to me, is a phenomenal builder of strength. So there's my top 10, have at it, knock them out, get stronger. I'm going to post the link to Mitchell Hooper's video in the uh, description of this video so you can check that out. Please do, uh, don't just take my word for it. Go look at what he said, go listen to what he had to say. And that is it. So always, until next time, always be in the pursuit of strength.